all right my dear students today we are going to discuss uh, how to make provision for depreciation account now what is provision for depreciation provision for depreciation also known as accumulated depreciation provision or accumulated depreciation is the total depreciation till date of an asset that we have it is known as provision for depreciation account now in this question what we need to do first of all we need to make a provision for depreciation account now let us practice this provision first and then we are going to go for disposal account now let me read the question for you i am sure you must have learned how to calculate depreciation in the previous lessons we are also uh, done with this question and now we are revisiting this question again why because previously we learned how to calculate depreciation using straight line and reducing balance and now we are learning how to make the journal entries uh, double entries for depreciation and how to make a ledger account that is t account for provision for depreciation now quickly re let me read the question again for you ard textiles have started business on 1st january 2013 transaction relating to non current assets are as follows now the rate of depreciation was 15% straight line Note fully a depreciation is charged in the year of purchase, but no depreciation in the year of disposal. We discussed there were two policies of charging depreciation. One was full year policy, as in this case, and there was another policy that was month wise policy. Okay, now what we need to do, we need to make a provision for depreciation account, which is also known as accumulated depreciation account. So before making provision account, we need to quickly recap how to calculate depreciation, which we have already discussed previously. Now, as you can see in 2013, we have one machine uh, as it is the first year of the business. We have bought one machine for how much for 100,000. Now the depreciation rate is 15%. So what we need to do, we need to quickly uh, apply 15% on this one lakh. One lakh times 15% is 15,000 depreciation for the first year. Okay. Now in 2014, although we have bought two new machines from Honda at a cost of 35 each, therefore the two machines costed altogether 70,000. Okay, so we have bought new machines for 70,000. But what happened to this old machine? This old machine is still there. Okay, so the older, uh, the previous machine uh, costed business 100,000, and the new two new machines costed the business 70,000. Now, if we are applying full year policy, it's better to charge depreciation on all machines altogether. But if instead we are using reducing balance or maybe month wise policy in straight line, it would be better to charge depreciation separately on each non current asset. Uh, but in this case, I am uh, adding up all of these together and I'm applying depreciation on 170,000 or worth of machines. We are going to apply 15 percent again. Now, as you can see, the depreciation has increased. Why? Because the number of machines have increased. And if instead, if we have bought, not bought this new machine, so the depreciation in straight line would remain equal for each year. Uh, 15,000 would remain equal for each year. Now, in 2015, as you can see, we haven't bought any new machines. So, therefore, the depreciation would be the same as 2014. So, again, on 170,000, we are going to apply 15%. That is 25,500. And lastly, in 2016, as you can see, we have sold one of the machine that uh, costed the business 100,000. So in a full year policy, we never charge depreciation on the asset that have been disposed of. Okay, we are not going to charge depreciation on the asset that have been disposed of. So in 2016, we are only going to depreciate the machine that we are still in the business. And the machine that we have sold off was... Uh, the 2013 machine that was 100,000 machine. So we no longer need to charge depreciation on the 100,000 machine. Instead, we are going to charge depreciation only on the machine that was worth 70,000. Okay. So this was basically the depreciation. So I've already discussed that in detail in the earlier lessons. And let us make a provision account. Now, before making a provision for depreciation account, I need to learn how to make journal entry for depreciation. Now, as you may be aware that depreciation is an expense. So the entry would be income statement would be debited. Why? Because it is an expense. Now, instead of crediting the machine account directly, 
I need to make a separate account with the name of provision for depreciation. Now, what is the provision for depreciation, my dear students? Provision for depreciation is also known as accumulated depreciation. It is basically a contra asset. Now, what is the contra asset? Uh, you must have studied previously that we discussed about provision for doubtful debt. Okay, anything that reduces the value of our debtors is known as provision for doubtful debt and that was a contra asset. Contra asset is anything that reduces the value of our asset. I have uh, given this example previously also. Let me repeat it for you guys. Uh, a life is very precious and the life that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us, it is basically a pre precious asset. Okay. Uh, what happens if someone takes drugs or if someone smokes okay, or someone drinks? So, therefore, the life expectancy would go down. Okay. So, if an asset is debit in nature, uh, what uh, happens when the asset uh, value goes down? So, it is a provision. Provision, it is basically a contra asset. Something that reduces the value of an asset. If the asset is debit in nature, so therefore the provision is always credit in nature. Okay. So, whenever a provision increases, the entry would be provision would be credited. Okay. So, the depreciation entry would remain the same every time income statement is debited only and the provision would be credited. Provision is also known as accumulated depreciation. Now, let me make an account provision for depreciation account for you guys. Uh, we just discussed that provision nature is credit. Therefore, the balance brought down would always comes on the credit side. Now, as you can see, uh, Mr. AID have just started the business in January 2013. Therefore, we do not have any provision prior to that date. Uh, but if instead it was a second or third year, so the balance brought down would always comes on the credit side. Now, as you can see in the first year, we charge depreciation of 15,000 on the 100,000, the only machine that we do have in 2013. So the depreciation is 15,000. So the entry would be income statement would be debited and the provision account would be credited. Now, as you can see, this is a provision account and not an income statement account. So the provision account is being credited and the reference would be debited. Okay, so in a double entry, whenever we credit an account, we used to uh, write reference of the debit entry. Now, as you can see, there is only one entry in it. So, you must be aware from your earlier study that studies that all of the assets and liabilities and contra assets as well need to be balanced. Okay, so whenever we need to balance this, the shorter side would always become a balance CD that is carried down. Now, as you can see, both of the sides are now balanced. Now, if there is only one entry on both of the sides, we do not need to write the total again. Okay, why? Because the total of 15,000 would also be 15,000. Now, this balance carried down would become balance brought down at the start of the next accounting period. Okay, this is basically provision for depreciation account. Now, as you can see, in the next year, we have depreciation 25,500. And after that year is again 25,500. And the last year, we have 10,500. So, the entry would remain the same. Uh, income statement would be debited always here and the provision account would be credited. Now, uh, unlike the provision for doubtful debt account, if you have learned this, uh, we uh, learned this previously provision for doubtful debt. If the provision is increased, the entry would be this income statement debit and provision for doubtful debt credit. But if the uh, provision decreases, so the income statement would be here in the debit side. Okay. But in, the, in depreciation, that's not the case. In the provision for doubtful debt topic, the doubt can be increased and the doubt can be decreased as well. But in a depreciation, the income statement would be debited always. It cannot be credit. Okay. It can never be credited. So the entry would be the same every year. Income statement would be debited always and the provision for depreciation would be credited always. Now, in the first year, we had depreciation of 15,000. The second year, we charged depreciation of 25,500. Now, what I need to do, I need to add up both of these and the total depreciation would be 40,500. Okay. So, the shorter side would be balance CD again. If there is only one item here, this is balance CD and this is the total as well. Now, the total would be uh, in front of each other. So, this balance carried down uh, at the uh, end of second year would become balance brought down at the start of third year. 
Now in the third year, the depreciation is also the same. In a straight line, the depreciation would be charged equally every year unless and until we buy an asset and we sell an uh, old asset. Okay. So uh, again, we need to add up both of these. 40,500 plus 25,500 would become 66,000. So again, this would be a balance CD. Now in a provision account, uh, as you may be noticing, uh, the balance BD always comes on the credit side and balance CD would always comes on the debit side. These two sides are also fixed and an income statement is also fixed in a provision for depreciation account. But in a provision for doubtful debt account, uh, income statement can also come on the debit side. Why? Well, when the provision is being decreased. But that's not the case here. Okay. So this balance BD would become in the last year. Now in the last year, we are only left with depreciation that is 10,500. Why? Because we have sold one of the machine. So the total provision would be 76,500. And the last year we should also do this balance CD. Now prior to doing that, there is only uh, there is one more adjustment in the last year. As you can see we have sold one of the uh, machine, uh, hundred thousand machine we have sold in 2016. Now my dear students, uh, in the previous lesson when we learned how to make a T account for cost of the asset, you must remember whenever we sell a non-current asset, we need to transfer that asset the cost of that asset to a disposal account where to a disposal account now similar would be the case here whenever we are selling a non-current asset the non-current asset account would be uh, transferred to disposal and the asset that we have sold we do not uh, no longer need the provision of the asset that we have sold okay so the total depreciation of the asset that we have sold would also need to be transferred to where a disposal account okay so as you can see provision is credit in nature but what happens if we are uh, closing the provision account provision account needs to be uh, closed and the total depreciation of the asset that we have sold off need to be transferred to where a disposal account okay so what will be the value of the disposal here uh, when we were making a cost account so the disposal would have the original cost of the asset that we have disposed of okay but here we are making a provision account so what we need to do we need to make uh, uh, we need to calculate the total depreciation of the machine that we have disposed of okay total depreciation so uh, the asset that we have disposed of this year originally costed the business hundred thousand when in 2013 okay so we have uh, basically charged depreciation for four years in the first year we charged depreciation 15 percent on 100,000 it was 15,000 in the second year we also charged depreciation 15 percent now as you may be aware that in a straight line method we need to charge equal depreciation each year okay uh, we have bought the asset originally in 2013 and we have used the asset for three uh, long years that is 2013 14 and 15. so the same depreciation would be charged each year that is 100,000 times 15% and if we add up all of these depreciation the total depreciation till date would be 45,000 okay so this 45,000 uh, depreciation needs to be transferred to where a disposal account okay now out of the total depreciation that is 76,500 we need to transfer 45,000 to disposal account why because we have sold this asset and the depreciation that is left with uh, is balance CD that is uh, closing balance 31,500 now this is the depreciation of the machines that we are still using okay the Honda machines remember the Honda machine that we are still using this is the depreciation of that machine that is 31,500 now this balance CD would becomes balance BD at the start of next accounting period so my dear student this was uh, how to make a provision for depreciation account Okay, my dear students, we are practicing provision for depreciation account and we have a past paper question with the name of Stav Ross. I'm sure you have done this question previously as well. And previously, we learned how to make a T account for original cost of the assets. And we also learned how to calculate depreciation. And now we are going to learn how to make a provision for depreciation account, okay, for equipment. We need to make a provision account and provision is a contra asset. 
What is the contra asset? Contra asset is something that reduces the value of an asset. So therefore, a provision is always credit in nature. So a balance BD would always comes on the credit side. Now, as you can see in the question, the year ends on August 12th. So therefore, the year must have been started on 1st September, not 12, but 1st September 2011. So this is the balance brought down that is opening balance of provision for depreciation. Now other, another name for provision for depreciation is accumulated depreciation. Now let us see how much total depreciation that we do have for equipment. Now as you can see equipment so the total depreciation at the end of the previous year was 24,000. Okay. So accumulated depreciation and provision means the same thing. So whenever we are charging depreciation this year. So the entry general entry for depreciation would be income statement would be debited and the provision for depreciation account would be credited. Okay. So the income statement would comes on the credit side. Now let me make the entries first and then we are going to plug in the values and whenever what happens sir whenever we sell a non-current asset whenever we sell the asset the original cost of the asset is being transferred to a special account known as disposal and if we have transferred the original cost of the asset therefore we also need to transfer the total depreciation of the asset as well okay so the total depreciation of the asset would also need to be transferred to where to a disposal account okay so the balance that we are left with is a balance cd that is closing balance so this is basically the format uh, of provision for depreciation this balance uh, carried down at the end of the year would becomes a balance brought down at the start of next accounting period so this was basically the format let us do the calculation once more we have already learned how to do calculation now in an equipment account let me see what is the depreciation method that is being applied in the question for equipment we are going to use 20 percent per annum straight line method okay we are applying depreciation on straight line and there is a full year policy in place okay full year depreciation is charged in the year of purchase and no depreciation in the year of sale so there are basically two types of policy we have discussed previously one is full year and one is month wise policy but in this question we need to apply full year policy now as you can see uh, and at the end of the previous year or the start of this year we had equipment worth 60000 okay so the 60000 is the original cost of the asset at the end of the previous year or start of this year now what happens in this year have we uh, sold any asset yes in node 1 uh, on 31st January 2012 that is this year equipment that was purchased in 2009 at an original cost of 28,000 was sold for 10,000. So uh, if we have sold the asset we do no longer need to depreciate that asset. So what we need to do we need to deduct the asset that we have sold this year and uh, uh, if we have bought a new asset we need to add up this in node 2 we have also bought new equipment at a cost of 35 okay so we have sold the previous uh, old asset and we have bought a new one in place of that and at the end of the year we are left with the value of the assets cost of the asset and we need to charge 20 percent depreciation okay it's a straight line and what happens if we haven't bought or sold any asset we just need to apply 20 percent on the original cost that is 60,000 okay so this is the depreciation for this year so the entry would be income statement account my dear students would be debited and a provision account would be credited okay now as you can see the previous year uh, okay at the start of the year we had total depreciation of 24,000 and in this year we have charged further depreciation of 13,400 so what we need to do we need to add up both of these the total depreciation we do have is 37,400 uh, now what happens if we have sold one of the asset we also need to remove the total depreciation of the asset that we have sold this year and we need to transfer it to where a special account known as disposal account. Now let me see how much depreciation has been charged on the asset that we have disposed of this year. Okay, let me see when did we originally bought an asset as you can see in note number one. Uh, the original cost of the asset was 28,000 okay original cost of the asset was 28,000 and what we need to do we need to charge depreciation each year now as you can see the year is being ended on 31st August 
okay and we have bought the asset when we have bought the asset in april now uh, when uh, will the year ends uh, or when will august comes after april 2009 after april would becomes uh, august in 2009 okay so the first year ends on august 2009 only uh, although we haven't used the asset for the entire year we have just used a few months april may june july august only five months but we do not need to count months here why because it's a full year policy okay so the first year ending in august 2009 second year is ending in august 2010 third year ends in august 2011 but we do not need to chart depreciation in august 2012 why because beta in a full year policy we do not need to chart depreciation on the year that we have sold okay so we have just need to chart depreciation in three years that is 2009 10 and 11 and not the 2012 why because no depreciation is charged in the year of sale using full year policy so it's a straight line we need to chart equal depreciation each year so 28,000 multiplied by 20% the first year we have depreciation 5,600. Now as you may be aware then that in a straight line method equal depreciation is charged each year. So we need to charge equal depreciation for 3 years that is 2009, 10 and 11. So if we add up all of these or if we multiply 5,600 times 3. So therefore it will be the total depreciation that is 16,800. Now what is this 16,800? 16,800 my dear students is the total depreciation of the asset that we have sold off, uh, of this year. Okay. So out of this total depreciation of all of the assets that is 37,400 we need to deduct 16,800. Why? Because we have sold the asset. So therefore we no, no longer need the depreciation uh, of the asset that we have disposed of. Okay. Now the depreciation of the assets that we are still using is 20,600 at the end of the year and this would become balance BD at the start of next accounting period. So this is basically how we make a provision for depreciation account. Balance BD always comes on the credit side. Balance CD would always comes on the debit side. Income statement always comes on the credit side. Unlike provision for doubtful debt account. Uh, in which the provision uh, can be debited as well uh, with the income statement but in a provision for depreciation income statement always comes on the credit side and whenever we have sold an asset so the total depreciation till date of the asset that we have sold this year will need to, will need to be transferred to where a disposal account okay so let's keep it till here only okay